Hello there and welcome to another video. So a bit of a different one today. So as the title says, um, it's going to be talking about the Fallout TV show. So um, I'm a big Fallout fan. I've played uh, almost all the games. Um, I haven't dabbled too much in one or two, but I know all the lore behind it. Uh, that was kind of, that was before my time in essence. But I've been a huge fan of Fallout ever since. I remember when I was a youngin going into, uh, into GameStop. And picking up, I remember in GameStop, they I used to always get the collector's editions. I used to go in and I'd be like, oh, um, what collector editions do you have and stuff? And I remember them like, oh, we have Fallout. And I'm like, what's that? I remember he brought out this like collector's edition and it was like the lunchbox from Fallout with the Vault Boy on and it had the, the Lone Wanderer and dog meat. And I remember looking at it and like, okay, that looks kind of interesting, but maybe not might be my, might not be my thing. Prior to that, I used to just mainly play Halo. I remember saying to them, I was like, oh, can you like, uh, you know, can you get the dog as a companion or, you know, as the dog, like your friend? And the guy was like, to be honest with you, I don't really know. I've never played it. But I ended up getting it and it was my first kind of introduction into Fallout. And yeah, like it was, it blew me away. Like I remember when we used to have to like go places, like if, like say my, um, if my mother was like, we were going say away or whatever i used to bring the little art book with me and i used to kind of read it um and just look at the different kind of the the characters and yeah from that point i was hooked and then i remember playing again uh when i was that age i think i was maybe when did it come out 2010 i think 2009 i didn't have uh, internet at the time it wasn't really a big thing over here like it was you know where i was it wasn't and i remember uh I knew about the DLCs to Fallout 3, and I really wanted them, but um, didn't have Xbox Live or didn't have online. And then they brought out the Game of the Year edition, and I remember it took months for GameStop to get it, and I would ring them, ring them, ring them. But anyway, yeah, I played all the Fallouts, played New Vegas, big fan of New Vegas, uh, played Fallout 4, played 76. And yeah, so let's talk about the TV show, because I know there's generally, the, or it's generally reg regarded quite highly, a lot of high reviews, but... <clears throat> there's a lot of some negativity around some of the fans and um like with my starfield content i feel like it's i i have a very kind of a positive outlook on certain things like that like i watch the halo tv show and i know a lot of people are kind of like what the hell crimson that was shit and i'm like well it's not really i enjoyed it especially season two but yeah so i've kind of got a list of the things that i kind of like and then there's some things that i kind of not necessarily don't like but you know questions so I suppose we'll start off with some of the things I like. And the first one is, I love how they capture the dark humor of the games. Like that's something that you, like, you know, when you play Fallout, at, at an off glance, you think, okay, this is just your standard, like, you know, role-playing game set in a post-apocalyptic universe. You, you know, it's, it's dark, but is there humor? And there is humor. And sometimes you don't spot it, depending on how you play the game, but it's, it's there. That very kind of satirical take and very satirical humor and i really like that they kind of captured it and they played pretty heavily into it like you've got the again this is going to have a lot of spoilers so uh just be warned like the kind of the way the um kind of the vault dwellers are where they where they show lucy or goosey as kind of she's very naive and kind of not ignorant i suppose but more like just yeah completely naive same with uh with um maximus I always get Max with the Titus confused. And just the kind of the, yeah, the general kind of humor with it. And then it being very dark. Like you've got the mysterious guy that does dodgy things, but, you know, helps with serums and stuff. And then the the next thing I, I kind of have written down here is, um, and there's, there's quite a few things, um, is the world was really, really well portrayed. Like most of the Fallout games I've played, uh, 76, uh, Fallout 4, and Fallout 3, obviously I played Fallout in Vegas, they take place on the East Coast, so you've got, um, Washington, um, the Commonwealth, so, uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and then, um, West Virginia, and obviously Fallout New Vegas takes place on that, uh, on the West Coast in, uh, Vegas, but, this the the kind of the california the la sort of style like that's very much western fallout one and two which i don't didn't play but uh i know a lot about the lore and i think they captured it really well um 
like the even the the kind of the, the kind of the setting of it like the the it's very kind of like the junk everywhere the you know the it's a lot of it is a wasteland because it is a wasteland and it was really cool seeing places like the um like uh, philly that town was so cool it very reminiscent of megaton kind of fit right in and then you obviously we have other locations as well like the vaults and stuff which we'll talk about that in a little bit the next thing uh and this is a big one for me was seeing power armor in live action was absolutely amazing like we've seen some teasers of power armor before and stuff like you've seen some people who've done really good cosplay but it's nice to finally see it in lore the armor looked absolutely awesome like just seeing how it kind of performed was really well like seeing them you know like kind of dropping down like they can take a beating and just being very powerful but also being very vulnerable which i quite like that they focused now there was a little bit little bit of a nitpick the t60 armor that they use in the game was recently was retconned in with i believe fallout 4 retconned it the brotherhood mentioned that it was used in anchorage but in fallout 3 and again this is the issue with like um with with one of the things i kind of will say with um kind of storyline and stuff as content moves on the story progresses you have to make changes or retcons and in fallout 3 it was t45d was the armor that was deployed onto um was mainly deployed into anchorage and they had some t51b but that was a prototype and it wasn't kind of heavily used but t60 wasn't a thing up until fallout 4 i believe when the brotherhood kind of used it and it's pretty much just an improved t45d because one of the issues t45d power armor had in uh fallout uh three and in, in just in pre-war or during the war was that it was very good armored against uh it was really good against ballistics uh like uh rifles and stuff but it wasn't very good against energy weapons uh, projectiles explosives and stuff like that and it used to chew through energy cells like obviously they don't showcase it in the in the games um, with Fallout 4, they changed it to fusion cores, but originally the they used to be powered by energy cells, and it would burn through them. So obviously T60 was meant to be an improvement upon that and kind of fix some of the glaring weaknesses, which is kind of interesting because in the in one of the scenes, uh, the ghoul makes reference to his character served uh, in the military pre-war or po like during the war. And uh, he references that, like, there's certain weaknesses that they haven't fixed um, underneath the wells, underneath the chest plate. And that obviously allows him to kill some power armor troops. But that was a kind of a weird one that they went with that, like, because um, the whole point of T60 is it's supposed to be an improvement on the T45. And also technically an improvement on the T-51, even though the T-51 is a different set of armor. But that's one thing I did find kind of a little strange. I would have liked to have seen some some differencing in armor. Like, obviously, the Brotherhood of Steel, you know, we'll talk about them too. Um, but that's kind of their preferred armor. Fallout 4, they heavily use T-60, which makes sense. But yeah, next one is obviously talking about the Brotherhood. We got to see a lower accurate representation of the actual Brotherhood. Like, if you played Fallout 3, uh, you know that the Brotherhood are kind of seen as these good guys. They are the kind of the saves of the Wasteland. Elder Alliance's uh, chapter, the Capital Wasteland chapter, very much kind of, well, they were shunned, in essence, by the uh, Western Brotherhood, the original Brotherhood. And they kind of deviated from their original kind of objective of find pre-war technology, hoard pre-war technology, protect the Wasteland from itself by using technology. And that's what caused the divide between the Outcasts and Elder Lions' chapter. And yeah, so we see the Brotherhood actively, the Capital Wasteland Brotherhood, specifically Elder Lions' chapter, actively helping out in the Wasteland. And then in Fallout, or Fallout New Vegas, you kind of see a different side of the Brotherhood, a more realistic Brotherhood. The kind that uh, if they see a Wastelander with technology that they want, they will demand you give it to them, and if you don't, they'll probably kill you, because they see themselves as kind of the greater good. When you have your first interaction with the Brotherhood in New Vegas, depending on if you have Veronica or not, if you don't have Veronica, you have a bomb collar strapped to you, and you're basically kind of coerced into doing this specific quest line to kind of prove your worth. Now, in Fallout 4, uh, the events of kind of it takes place 
couple of years after Fallout 3, Elder Lyons dies, uh, and Sarah Lyons takes over his daughter. And then Sarah Lyons falls in battle, which we don't really know the ins and out of it. But Elder Maxon, uh, who was Squire Maxon in Fallout 3, he was sent with Elder Lyons. He's the grandson of the original Elder Maxon, um, Arthur Maxon, I believe. So Elder, uh, Elder Maxon uh, basically takes over. And one of the first things he does is kind of bring the Brotherhood more in line with how they were originally in the uh, in the way in the um, the east coast or the west coast, and he also brings the um, the Brotherhood outcasts back into the fold. Now this is kind of the telltale sign of the switch, because when we see them in Fallout Four, they're not as like to the average person they're not as kind of aggressive, but they have adopted this kind of mentality of of the original Brotherhood of. All sort, all sort of unclean mutants, be it ghouls and super mutants, are to be eradicated immediately. Uh, they despise synths. Um, they have, yeah, they've adopted the very, um, the, they've went from being the kind of the egalitarian kind of protectors to being a kind of a authoritarian kind of fascist dictatorship, which is kind of ironic, considering that Elder Maxon was brought up by uh, Elder Lyons and he idolized Sarah Lyons and Sarah Lyons literally like put her life on the line to protect the wasteland like her and the Lyons pride jump at the opportunity to defend the uh, the lone vault or the lone wanderer as he tries to push through the enclave and basically um, basically give uh, clean water to the wasteland now yeah so they've they've operated like more aligned the of the cultist of the brotherhood they have their their squires and their um aspirants and stuff like that and they have their knights and the way they've done the kind of the squire knight thing it's it's interesting it's not something you tend to see in the uh in the uh first person kind of fallout games uh it's more in line with how they are in fallout 1 and 2 and I quite, I will say I like it. I like that they've kind of gone that route of like, kind of like, because the Brotherhood, I mean, the Brotherhood of the tagline of Fallout, you know, they're on the front cover of Fallout 3. Um, Fallout 4, they feature pretty heavily. And even in Fallout New Vegas, you know, the power armor and stuff. So it's cool that they've kind of went that role. Um, it's also, I think it's interesting. It's going to be interesting because a lot of people who are kind of these diehard fanboys of the Brotherhood who don't realize you know, if you play Fallout 3, you think, I love the Brotherhood, and then you see what they do, and you're like, ooh, do I still love the Brotherhood? So yeah, it was just really, really cool kind of seeing the Brotherhood and just how they've kind of done that. And then the, the next thing I will say, going on to the topic of, you know, uh, authoritarian kind of fastest, we've got the Enclave. So the Enclave were teased in it. Uh, the, one of the characters kind of escapes uh, the Enclave um, with some very powerful technology. Now it it's a weird one because the, the way the timeline is, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but the it takes place around the base kind of TV show takes place around 10 years after the events of Fallout 4, I believe. It could be less than that. But the Enclaves still exist and they're kind of working on something. Now, the way the Enclave are kind of showcased in it, they're like in this kind of abandoned kind of factory and they have some guards and stuff protecting them, but there's no power armor at all and the kind of where they're working is very dingy and kind of downright decrepit which is weird considering the enclave or you know supposed to they live in you know like raven rock um the oil rig uh, places like that like they're supposed to be quite advanced so we don't know too much about it in with, with the lore like that they obviously there's some time jumps between and I'm not too sure if it's supposed to be because we don't know how long the guy has been out the the, the enclave um, uh, the enclave deserter. We don't know how long he's been away from the enclave. But when we see the scenes of the enclave themselves, yeah, it's they look very much not like what you'd expect of the enclave. Uh, we do get to see some 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 messing around with FEV. We briefly see a table where someone has been mutated. Now, they're doing something with dogs. I'm not really sure what it is specifically. It looks like they're just 
training them potentially i don't know it kind of seems like they're kind of going the route of the death claw but with the dogs now there could be more to it um obviously he injects himself with something which ends up being a cold fusion which is a big plot point and the reason why everyone's kind of hunting him down but yeah, like, when it comes to the Enclave, I'm a huge fan of the Enclave. And yes, I know they are the ultimate bad guys, but I just like the kind of the organization and the fact that they don't hold any punches. They're like, we are the bad guys. Um, but it was it was interesting kind of seeing them. I'm assuming they're more remnants than kind of what they were. Hopefully in Season 2 we get to see more about them and kind of give the Brotherhood a bit of a, you know, a, kind of a run for their money when it comes to kind of, you know, the power of them. The next thing, obviously, we're going to talk about is the timeline. So the timeline was changed up a bit. Um, and I think the reason behind this is to try and bring the Brotherhood of Steel from Fallout 3 and 4 in line with the kind of the main story of the thing. Like, the whole kind of plot point is the Pridwin is in um, in on the uh, in California on the, the West Coast. And that's kind of why I think the timeline was pushed forward. Like, we have uh, references here, like, obviously, like... Um, the NCR basically kind of fell apart almost, and we kind of see that, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. But for the most part, it's uh, it's it's a bit it is a bit tricky trying to understand the timeline. Like we know that the events of all like it's canon, the events of Fallen New Vegas still happen and stuff, but we don't know what the canon choices are. Like the Pridwin arriving in in California means that either the the, either the canon ending for Fallout 4 is either the Brotherhood ending or it's the Minutemen ending. Now, I'm inclined to think it might be the Minutemen ending just because the Pridwin is there. Although the fact that we didn't see uh, Elder Maxon himself makes me think that maybe he stayed back and maybe it is a Brotherhood ending for Fallout 4. Now, the other thing just touching on, obviously, is the way the Brotherhood guy talks, uh, the kind of their elder, I suppose. You don't think he's referenced as an elder when he basically tells uh maximus like we can forge a new brotherhood again kind of highlights to me that maybe uh because one of the first things uh arthur max or elder maxon would do uh, squire maxon uh, would do after the events of fallout 4 is take the pridwin and go to the west coast and reunite the brotherhood and a lot of the people like on the uh, west coast probably do not like the idea of this this kind of you know this someone with with kind of you know like he's got the bloodline but he hasn't been there he hasn't seen what they've seen especially the war they've had with the ncr and the enclave so it seems like obviously there's a divisiveness with the brotherhood and it just kind of also highlights the fact that when you look at the brotherhood obviously we're going back here to talk about the brotherhood again they're not the same organization that you would kind of expect and it makes me think that a lot of the focus on the brotherhood is still more on the kind of the western brotherhood because while the eastern brotherhood and you see them in fallout 4 they are kind of assholes there is they're a lot more organized and a lot more structured whereas you see the ones on the we focus on uh, titus and stuff they're very more independent and stuff and just kind of their 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 kind of their their mentality and their kind of their discipline is lacking but yeah so one of the other things uh Another thing is the weapons are very, very cool. So the ghoul has this really cool kind of almost like a bolt revolver from like a Warhammer type weapon. Very, very cool. It shreds. I really want to see it in game. Uh, hopefully modders will probably put it in. Bit of a weird one. Bethesda didn't put it in considering that they've kind of, you know, like they put a pack out in 76. But um, there's also we've got the syringer rifle or the syringer pistol, which is a new addition. And then there's the the pistol that's used by the Brotherhood that looks to be, it's a weird one. It looks to be a kind of a, a, a ballistic pistol rather than a laser weapon. Now, one thing I will say about the weapons is it's cool seeing new weapons, and there definitely was some old school, you know, some originals, but they were kind of lacking. Like the Brotherhood uh, power armor troops make use of those big, um, the big uh, Fallout Four assault rifles. And it's nice actually finally seeing them in use because they were quite large. And I think one of the reasons they were so big in Fallout 4 was they were meant to be used with power armor. But I kind of wish we would have seen more of the Brotherhood using laser weapons. Like we see the uh, the leader of the kind of the, the ragtag group of NCR using a laser pistol. 
but I kind of would have liked to seen more of them, some laser weaponry, you know, stuff like that. Obviously, you know, it is what it is. The weapons are still cool and all. Uh, next thing is I want to talk about is the ghouls. The ghoul's a very, very cool character, really well thought out, and he's got a quite an interesting backstory. The fact that he kind of existed before the war and he's the original Vault Boy is really cool. Um, his kind of, his internal kind of struggle, because you can kind of see, like, he's not a bad guy inherently, you know, but he still does bad things, which is kind of, it's an interesting, it, it kind of shows that even in Fallout, like, it's hard to find truly good people. I think, uh, Lucy and some of the Vault Dwellers are probably the only good people, and that's because they've been sheltered in their vaults for so long. But it's going to be interesting to see how the ghoul's character kind of fleshes out. Uh, as we go because I could see him especially with him looking for his family it's going to be interesting to see like what actually happens like there's the reference in the pre-war situation where the one of the guys makes a joke about needing an alo alimony so clearly him and his wife are separated but I wonder what happened did he like call her up on her her vault tech stuff because yeah I mean if you were married to someone and had a child with them and then you found out that they were the they were harboring a kind of a darker secret. It's like, goddamn. So on the concept of, or on the topic of dark secrets, you've also got the vault Tech, which dropping the bombs, that was a that was a big one, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't expect it, personally. It is a theory that a lot of people speculated, um, or not a lot, some people speculated the bombs, because the, the general consensus was that it was either America that dropped the bombs or it was, uh, or it was China that dropped the bombs first. Now, when you play Fallout 76, you learn that America wasn't the first ones to launch the nukes. But the fact that, yeah, that vault -Tec basically dropped the bombs, which it's in line with vault -Tec. They are capitalist assholes in the game, you know? That's kind of their thing. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely an interesting take, and it's something that going forward it's definitely going to kind of shape different people's opinion on vault tech and stuff so the next thing i want to talk about is vault tech uh, or not vault tech the ncr collapsing uh with um with them bombing of shady sands like that's a new addition uh it uh, kind of it makes sense given the uh the kind of the ncr storyline of fallen in vegas in fallen in vegas if you you know pay attention to the ncr storyline they're basically making a last-ditch effort to try and take New Vegas and kind of conquer it as new territory in the hopes of keeping their republic together. But obviously, that's not go that wouldn't have happened. You know, like, they're spread thin as is, and they make, make it very clear that they're spread thin with the Legion kind of pushing down their necks on one side and then their own stuff on the other. So the fact that Shady Sands has been basically nuked is, yeah, it's... It's definitely an interesting one. Like, we uh, we know that Fallen in Vegas takes place after, and we see some teasers of the Strip and some NCR Vertibirds. So clearly the battle of Hoover Dam has happened, and, like, New Vegas has happened. And I'm guessing they lost. More than likely, I'm assuming a uh, house won, potentially. Just giving kind of the, the thing of it. The other thing is they moved Shady Sands a bit closer to L.A., which I think that's more of just a set piece to make it easier personally i don't find that as a huge issue to me but then i never really played the first and second games so you know i'm not as kind of diehard towards that but i do think it is again it's the fact that vault did it it's just yeah like jesus so the the board meeting in the uh the pre-war scenes with the represent represent representatives from big mountain in Old World Blues was really cool. We also got to see Repcon representative, and then we got to see West Tech and Mr. House. Now, that whole scene was really cool because it showcases all the different kind of points and how basically they're all coming on board with Vault Tech and stuff for various different reasons. You know, they want to do their sketchy stuff. And Mr. House being there is interesting because if you play Fallen in Vegas, Mr. House is very much a kind of a pragmatist and he's a, you know, he's not a, he's not an evil character, but he's not inherently a good character. He's quite neutral. He wants New Vegas to prosper and that's very clear, but the fact that he's kind of there makes me think that maybe he's there more to kind of keep an eye on, on, um, basically his competitors than let's say for instance, uh, being part of the vaults necessarily like we do know um 
we do know that in there is a vault in Vegas itself on the strip which you know obviously he plays ball to some extent but and then the uh the other thing is uh going back is the the ncr ranger armor we see in true live action again is really cool like we get to see it in a couple of fan films but it's nice to finally see it i hope we get to see more of the character the father um in season two i see a few people online were talking about how like his his actor is quite prominent and they think that because he's a prominent actor, he's not going to be just kind of a once-off. His, like, mannerism and how, like, in the whole scene with him and the ghoul and his son, it kind of showcases to me a kind of a, a very kind of grizzled old veteran who's seen enough of war and just wants to live a peaceful life. And even when he loses his son, he kind of doesn't react in a kind of a way, which kind of makes me showcase that, like, yeah, he lost his son, but... He kind of knows like you know what happens and stuff like that so hopefully we get to see more of him and the the three vault system was very interesting it was kind of a new concept they showcased some of the other vaults and stuff but the idea of you have like kind of the main vault um that lucy's from and then you've got the other vault that was taken over by raiders a long time ago because they found um well, basically they found out about vault uh 31 i believe and how it's made up of people from before the war which is definitely an interesting one it's they're making use of the cryo technology from vault 111 in fallout 4 which is kind of cool i like the kind of this the kind of the you've got like lucy's character who's like out in the vault doing outside the vault doing stuff and then you've got um i believe believe i don't know his, his name but uh is it moises arius i butchered his name he's uh i used to watch him in hannah montana back in the day i'm love to see him in stuff i always thought he was a really good actor in that but he's he's phenomenal in this he's kind of you know like on the home front trying to figure out what's going on and he stumbles upon it when he finds the uh the robo brain or the robo brain on a rumba if you watch the the uh the cinematic or not the cinematic but yeah but all in all like it's it's just really cool that that there's got we've got these different plot points going on so that's that's pretty much it like the the way it ends is very interesting you've obviously got like it's kind of lucy and the ghoul are heading off after her father uh maximus is kind of claiming the kill of uh the ncr leader um and that's kind of going to propel him to knighthood and stuff and he obviously want like he loves lucy and uh, you can tell, like, he kind of is, well, I mean, he's infatuated with her because probably the first time he's seen, like, a woman outside of the Brother of Steel. And he obviously is conflicted because he wants to go with her and live in the vault, like she said. But also this idea of, he has this idea of the Brotherhood that isn't actually the Brotherhood. His idea of the Brotherhood is more akin to the Brotherhood of Fallout 3. And I think when the Elder basically says to him, we can forge a new Brotherhood, you and me... I think he's enamored by that because he's reminded by how he was saved by the Brotherhood. And it's like kind of the loyalty to the Brotherhood versus the loyalty to his own feelings. And it's it's going to be interesting going forward. And also the NCR. Like the NCR are very fragmented in that area, but the NCR encompassed a very large region. You know, like you've got different elements of the NCR. You've got the NCR Force Recon, which like I know if the NCR collapsed, those guys are definitely kind of fall back to their old roots of being, you know, the kind of the rangery kind of role. You also have the rangers, which again, hopefully we get to see more of. But yeah, it, all in all, I really, really liked it. Um, I'm really excited for the next season. It couldn't come any sooner. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you guys think, what your kind of your favorite parts were. And uh, yeah, as always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. A little bit different, but you know it. It is what it is. I, like I said, I had a few people tell me to do a video on it. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys.